and welcome to episode 6 of Sarastro's Marvel Crisis Protocol painting series. In this video I'll be painting Dr. Octopus from Atomic Mass Games Marvel Crisis Protocol. You can see that when painting the figure I've once again aimed for quite a bright comic book aesthetic, and because I felt slightly underwhelmed by the traditional green and yellow colour scheme, I've chosen to introduce some bright magenta to add interest, which I've used for some glowing elements on the harness as well as the arm lasers. Let's take a look at a quick overview of how I'll be painting Dr. Octopus. As usual I've chosen to prime the figure in black, followed with some grey and white xenothal highlights supplied from above, as detailed in episode 1. Next we'll provide the base colours, except for the tentacles which I'll be painting towards the end. We can then highlight the figure, and along the way I'll be creating some elements of glowing magenta and providing some object source lighting to the surrounding areas. I'll also be having some fun with the tentacles, using some pretty quick and easy ideas to create a striking look. Let's jump in with the base colours. I'm going to begin by painting the skin using Bugman's Glow, which I've chosen to darken and desaturate with a little black. Notice I'm painting the figure off base, simply to make it easier to reach the undersides of the tentacles later on. I've decided to paint the hair in black, using a mix of black and dark sea blue, and I might mix in a little white to provide a preliminary grey highlight to the top of the head. Here I'm wet blending in the grey. I'm also using this off black for the goggles. And I'm tidying things up as I go. For the yellow sections of the outfit I'm using Vallejo's green brown mixed with a little brown violet. I don't mind allowing some of the raised details to show through here, as we'll be applying multiple layers of highlights on top in a while. For the green areas I'm using Vallejo's black green, once again desaturated with a little black. I sometimes like to use less saturated shadow tones like this, to help the more saturated areas of highlight stand out, increasing the sense of depth. I'm now returning to the black mixed with dark sea blue to paint the harness. I've chosen to paint the tentacles at the end, as I'm fully anticipating accidentally hitting them whilst working on the rest of the figure. Since the harness includes a nuclear powered thermoelectric generator that powers the mechanical arms, I've chosen to add some bright glowing elements, and for the circular design at the front, I'm providing a base tone using a mix of scale colours sunset purple and deep red. Finally I'd like the recesses of the yellow sections to be a little darker, so I've chosen to provide a shade using a 3 to 1 mix of seraphim sepia and drukii violet, thinned with an equal amount of lamian medium. We're now ready to begin adding the highlights. I'm going to begin by highlighting the yellow areas of the outfit. For the mid-tone I'm going to build up to scale colours Sahara yellow, and from there to the more vibrant Sol yellow for the brighter highlights. So here I'm adding the Sahara yellow to the original base tone in a couple of stages. 
I'm highlighting just the boots to begin with to ensure I'm happy with my colour selection. This is now pure Sahara yellow. Notice that since the scale colour paints are somewhat translucent, you'll often see me use a more opaque line of paints like the Vallejo model colour range to provide the base tones, then switch to the scale colour line for the highlights, because I'm quite enjoying the brilliant colours and I find that the super matte finish lends itself well to creating quite a clean, bold look. With the mid-tone established, I'm now adding some Sol Yellow in a couple of stages for the brighter highlights. Here I'm just reapplying some of the shade tone selectively to better define a couple of the recesses. It's worth mentioning that you could achieve a perfectly good tabletop standard a lot more quickly by starting with a brighter yellow base tone and throwing on some shade. I'm just indulging myself by aiming for a slightly higher standard. This is now pure Sol Yellow, which I've reserved for my smallest and brightest highlights. Notice I will often create vertically aligned columns of highlight like you can see here on the back of the boot. I'm now highlighting the rest of the yellow areas in the same way. These shoulders are slightly fiddly if you want to preserve the pattern on the material. I'm also placing some initial highlights here beneath the arms, where I'll be adding some more extreme object source lighting in a while. I'll be returning to add a couple of even brighter highlights to the upper areas here later on. Now I'm going to highlight the green suit by firstly adding increasing quantities of scale colours Irati Green to the original base tone mix. As usual, this first layer is covering most of the outfit except for the darkest areas of shadow. This is now pure Irati Green. I'm 
I may still return to some of the darker mid-tones to adjust the volumes as I go. I'm now going to brighten things a little further by mixing in some spring green along with just a little sol yellow. I often like to vary the hue of a colour as I move from the shadows through the mid-tones and highlights to add interest. In this case however, I'm keeping the colours within quite a narrow range because the splashes of magenta I'll be adding in a while will be adding plenty of interest already and I wanted to keep the colour relationships quite cleanly defined. Sometimes after placing a highlight, I might glaze a little of the highlight tone over the border from the darker area into the highlight to create a more blended transition. Next I'm moving on to the face and I'll be lightening the Bugman's glow with some Cadian flesh tone, followed with some white and a little yellow for the brighter highlights. I'd also like to create some tonal variation with the inclusion of some dark sea blue for the chin area and a little red for the nose and cheeks. Here I'm mixing some dark sea blue and Cadian flesh tone into the Bugman's glow and I'm using this for the chin. For the rest of the face I'm just moving up to Cadian flesh tone. From these starting points I'm now lightening things up with the addition of some white and a little yellow. Here I'm boosting the red levels for the nose and cheeks. I've also mixed some black into the Bugman's glow to strengthen the shadow beneath the chin. And I'm now providing a highlight to the lower lip. And I'm using the shadow tone to help define the shape of the mouth. These are my last few highlights. I'm now going to paint the glowing element on the front by adding fuchsia to the base tone, followed with the addition of some white and then some glazes of fluorescent magenta on top. Here I'm firstly highlighting up to pure fuchsia. I'm also brightening the inner rim. I'm now adding the white. And I've chosen to create some swirling textures to add interest.
This is now virtually pure white. I'm now thinning the fluorescent magenta and brushing it over in a couple of layers until I'm happy with the look. I'm now going to highlight the harness using a mix of black and dark sea blue, which I'm going to lighten with some white, and I'll also be using some ivory for the brightest highlights. Here I'm just laying out the highlights in simple vertical columns of varying widths. I'm now playing around with the placement of highlights on the outer rim of the nuclear generator. Here I've decided to brush on a little of the Arati green into some of the midtones to give the impression of reflectivity. I'm highlighting the rear of the harness in the same way. I'm now using pure white to pick out the four recessed elements on the back surrounding the central light, even though the one on the left isn't that well defined in the sculpt. And here I'm painting the central light itself. Once dry, we can apply the fluorescent magenta on top. Notice I'm brushing the paint away from the centre of the light and into the recesses. Next I'm going to create some object source lighting for the underside of the arms, by firstly adding white to the yellow and green suit colours. This brings the values up and also desaturates the tone. I'm now using the fluorescent magenta mixed with some of the fuchsia just to increase the opacity, and brushing it on top to create the impression of light coming up from the generator. And here I've chosen to add some white to brighten the tone for the raised highlights. I'm also going to add some more gentle magenta light to the belly area, even if it's not at an angle to receive light directly from the generator, as light has a way of bouncing around from surface to surface. I'm also glazing a little magenta onto the upper rim of the generator itself. 
And finally, I'm hitting a few of the raised edges further down the legs. I'm now going to paint the tentacles, and I'm starting by providing a base coat of black mixed with dark sea blue. Next I'm going to use Vallejo's blue-grey pale to add a simple, opaque, bold strip of highlight along the upturned surface of each tentacle. I'm not too concerned if this gets into the gaps between the segments, as we can draw them back in later. Where the tentacle bends, we can just taper the highlight off. Here, I'm redefining the gaps between some of the segments. Next, I'm going to use Vallejo's Ivory to add some smaller, glinting highlights on top, mostly hitting the rims of the individual segments. Notice the contrast that this warmer tone creates against the cooler blue-grey pale. I'm now darkening the blue-grey pale slightly with a blue-black base tone, and using this to add some secondary reflections on the sides and undersides of the tentacles. Notice I'm working in quite a free and somewhat sketchy way, varying the thickness and placement of the highlights as I go. I'm using the same range of tones to highlight the claws. I'm also not going to blend these highlights the way I did with the Captain's Shield back in Episode 1, as I'm aiming for a more time-efficient approach, given the area we have to cover. I'm now providing a pure white undercoat for the lasers. And I'm boosting the surrounding highlights to pave the way for a little object source lighting. Just as with the back, I'm now using some fluorescent magenta to paint the lasers. And here I'm adding my object source lighting to the claws. I'm now doing the same for the areas nearest the light on the back. I'm also glazing some magenta onto the left tentacle. Here I'm having a play incorporating some of the other colours from the suit into the highlights on the tentacles. I'm now gluing the figure to the base, which I painted and varnished exactly as described in episode 1. And here I'm highlighting the hair with a simple grayscale. Next I've chosen to paint the lenses of the goggles using fuchsia. And I'm providing a few sharp highlights to the rim using some pale grey tones. I'm now returning to the tentacles to add some additional highlights to further break up some of these areas of black. Here I've chosen to boost the brightness of the generator by reapplying some white to the center, followed with a light glaze of the fluorescent magenta. I've now chosen to provide a glint of white to one side of each lens of the goggles, which I'm also now glazing over with a little of the magenta. Here I've chosen to push the yellow highlights on the upper body just a little further by lightening the sole yellow with a touch of white. To add some further interest to the base, I'm gluing down a couple of printed out newspapers. Next I've chosen to incorporate some of Vallejo's blue-green into the reflections on the tentacles, 
focusing on the upturned strips of highlight to loosely suggest the reflection of the sky. I'm also glazing a little of this onto the rim of the nuclear generator. And finally, I've chosen to use some black ink mixed with a little violet to firstly add some further interest to the tentacles. I'm applying this within the main areas of shadow to create some additional contrast, as the inks have quite a glossy finish, which also helps to create a further sense of depth. We can also use it to help separate the segments. And I'm finishing things off by using this to provide some dark lining elsewhere on the miniature. And this completes Dr. Octopus. Thank you so much for watching. As always, you'll find a full products list in the video description, along with links to where I can be reached on Instagram, Facebook, Spotify, and Twitter. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification icon to ensure you don't miss future episodes. My very special thanks as always go to the amazing patrons for helping to fund these videos. I simply couldn't do this without them. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Happy painting!